Um, yeah, so this is what we're going to talk today, about today. We're going to talk about Flask. We're going to talk about Azure Cognitive Services, specifically the translation service. And we're going to talk about Azure App Service and how we can bring them all together into what you just saw in that demo. Uh, so just so I know who's in the room, who's made a Flask app before? Put your hand up. Yep, a couple of Flask apps. Uh, who's used Azure Cognitive Services before? A couple of those. Who's used Azure App Service before? A couple of those, okay. I thought that would be the most popular one, and it, and it is. So we're gonna talk about those today and how to bring them all together um, in some easy steps. Why does it skip so many slides? There we go. Okay, so a Flask, Flask introduction. Flask is a micro uh, microservice, not a microservice, a micro framework for building web apps. Uh, it's just got the basics you need to get started. You can set up a route. So I go to this URL, it takes me to this uh, page, super easy. And you can do all your templating and things like that. It's got a few other features, but that's really all you need to know for this. Um, so for our very first web page, it's gonna be super simple. We're going to go to the home page with a get request. Please get me this page. We're gonna render this template. That's it. We do need the template, of course. So this, this is gonna be the template. Looks like a lot of code, but mostly it's just one form with two, three things, a text box where we write, hello, Cindy, I loved you when you visited from you know, India. I look forward to seeing you again in our text box. We've got our drop down for our language so we can choose something. We've put in five languages here, but there's actually dozens upon dozens of languages that Azure Translation Services supports, including things like Klingon, if that's what you wanna do in your app. Uh, if you have a strong need to translate things to Klingon and you don't wanna to have to learn all of Klingon yourself, Azure's got your back, just know that. So yeah, we've got that and we've got our submit button. So that's it uh, and it's super easy. This is all came out of the um, Microsoft Learn pathway originally. I did some editing to make it obviously pretty before, but you can just copy it out. It's just a super, basic form that you can copy and put in there and edit to your delight. So let's have a look at what it starts out looking like. So we've got our box, as I said, big text box. We've got our drop down with a couple languages in it. And we've got a page that doesn't work yet, obviously, because we didn't actually tell it to do anything once we've submitted the form. We're gonna need another route for that to be like, Please deliver my form to this place and then give me something back, I hope. <laughs> so let's uh, look into that in a second. But these, firstly, we have the problem that it doesn't really work, which is an issue we could say, maybe not the best that the form doesn't actually do anything yet, but also it's not very pretty. So I think we should probably address that first. So we're gonna add some style. Here's some CSS to actually make our HTML look pretty and a background picture. Couple of edits to our HTML, just reordering some stuff, putting some IDs on some, and some classes on various divs and stuff so I can address them and make it do exactly what I want, which is this, which I think is much better. Um, now I'm much more inspired to keep going with my project uh, so we can keep on going and actually like make it useful and do the thing that I promised that I would teach you about today. So. Let's move on to making it actually submit something on the, with our results page. So we've, we've got our submit button. We're gonna want it to give us our thing back that says, you know, here are the translated things that you've requested. Uh, but we're gonna to get to the translation in a second. We're just gonna try and get all of our Flask stuff out of the way, our second route. So I'm creating a second route here. It's actually also on the slash address. It's on the home address. Uh, but we've got a post, message, post method this time um, for that one. So we've got our get for the initial one. And when we post back, we actually post back to the home address. Uh, and then we're gonna get our uh, message that was translated displayed on the same address. If you do wanna know more about REST servers, uh, I do cover the difference between get and post in the talk that is that is on the YouTubes. If you wanna learn more about that, I'll give you a bunch of links later. Uh, but yeah, basically post, we can give it a bunch of stuff. We don't have to put it all in our URL as query parameters. 
So that's what we're going to do for this, submitting a four, a bit more secure looking as well. And yeah, so we're just going to start out with get the form. So we've been close to this message. We're going to start out grabbing the stuff that was in the form. Get me the text that they put into the form when they hit submit. Also get me the language from the form. So we've got that. And we then are going to render our template. So obviously we need to do some more stuff in the middle here to do with translation and the whole point of this app. We're going to get to that in a minute. That's going to go here. We're just going to go render the template and say, sorry, I'm not smart yet. I'm just going to give you your original message back. You said this. Just so we know that our route is working. Uh, so let's, let's give that a go. Oh, yes, we also need our template for that. We put our original text in here just so we know what we wrote in case we forgot. The translated text that isn't actually translated yet, but don't tell anybody and the language that we wanted in. Okay. So let's give it a go. So we're going to submit the form. We're going to choose a language that's not going to translate it to, as we said, it's not very smart yet. So we're going to get to that in a second. <laughs> but our whole Flask web server is working locally at the moment. So let's make it smart. Let's get to let's get to the point of all this. Azure is really cool and will do smart stuff for us. We just have to do a little bit of work. Uh, but let's talk about Azure uh, translation services first. It's part of Azure Cognitive Services. There's a bunch of cool different stuff that Azure's done all the hard work for you, where you can just take it and integrate it with your app or your site or whatever you're making um, to add some really cool features that are really clever. And I've seen, been watching, judging Imagine Cup recently, and the, some of the stuff that uni students are making, making just by taking products that are there and using them in creative new ways is really amazing, solving all sorts of medical and uh, lifestyle and green problems. So super, super cool stuff in there. I'd love to see you all put it to a use case that you see we need to fix. So it's a cloud-based machine translation service, which means I give the thing I want to the cloud and it gives me the thing I want back. So I go, I can do that just with a REST API call and say, here's the stuff I want. You just need the URL uh, and you know a few other secret keys and things which we're going to cover. And then I uh, get back what I want. And then, yeah, you could say it's as easy as Apple Pie. Uh, you could also say that's a typo and it's easy as API. Uh, so <laughs> that is, yeah, what we're going to talk about next, how to build this, a create the API in Azure Cognitive Services. So we can just call it from our Flask uh, web app. So let's just get the translator service set up first. So obviously I'm not going to do this live because it takes a little bit of time. So I've pre-recorded this for you. You go in and you look up translator and you click make translator, which is really great. Create it, give it a name, your region, all your normal stuff you do when you set up something on Azure. Uh, yeah, payment tier, etc. And then click create. We don't care about the rest of the stuff for the purposes of this. You wait a second and then due to the magic of video editing, it's ready to go, um, deployed instantly, or maybe just takes a, a minute. Uh, and this is the most important part. I might say it's the key part, in fact. Uh, so uh, we, these keys, are, we're going to be copying them into a .env file to do our local development. Uh, but later, when we want to do this, as part of the Azure app service, there'll be a place to put all these keys as well, which I'm going to cover. But firstly, we go through, and I've just copied these all to my clipboard so we can pop them into our .n file. So what we've got is our API endpoint, the URL we need to go to that will give us the magic translation if we give it text and the language to translate it to. A location just so it chooses something near you. I'm not actually sure why we need to set, set the region here. That's not my expertise, but I'm hoping to find out. And finally, and most importantly, the secret key, which I'm obviously not going to show you. It's really bad practice to show your secret key in a recorded 
you know, demo to everybody. That's my hot tip to you. If you haven't worked with secret keys, don't publish them on the internet. Don't put them in a live demo. Not that I think any of you are going to try and, you know, use my secret key to eat all of my Azure credits, but uh, just, you know, as a demonstration of what not to do, uh, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, we create a .n file, which has those three bits of information. We've got our location down the bottom, we've got our endpoint. These are just all copied directly out of there and we've got our key. And these are going to get read into the environment as environment variables using python.env. So we've imported that at the start. All of the Flask stuff is done in a Python virtual environment. And I've just pip installed all of this stuff. So Flask obviously and requests, so we can make requests. And .env, which handles environment variables while we're doing them locally. So now we've got all the keys set up locally. We just need a little code and it looks kind of like a bunch of code, but we're going to break it down and it's actually pretty chill. So let's have a look first. So here we go. We're grabbing our keys, which uh, we need them so we can make our call. And so we can say we're authorized to make this call etc and to the right endpoint so we grab those all out of the environment variables up, up up a little higher i don't know if i've got a slide on it actually we've included something that says load the dot end file for our local development uh so we, i think i've got a slide where i remove it later for our web app deployment uh but we've added that so we can read these in locally next up we need to Build the URL we're going to. I told you we had the endpoint earlier, which is in our endpoint variable. But we need to add a couple more things to it to build it out fully so that it's ready to make the call with our REST uh, API call. So we're adding also, like, we want to use Azure Translation Services API version 3. We're also adding that we want to translate it to this language. So that's where you put your language in into the URL that we're using uh, when we make the API call. It doesn't actually go in the body of the, of the request or anything. It's great into your URL path. Uh, yeah, so we add those three together and we've now got our URL where we can go and make an API call to translate some text. So now we need something to send off to make that request. So we're gonna set up that information in two different areas. We've got our headers. Uh, which, uh, you know, the metadata essentially of making your request. It's got your key. So we can say we are authorized to make this request on this Azure account and eat up those credits because we have the secret key but that we never told to anybody else. Yes. Then we've got our location. So we know where we're making it to. Does it make any sense for us to make a request to like Portugal? Because that's far away. May as well keep it local, keep it in the community, etc. So we've got that. Typical application JSON, that's kind of your standard, this is app JSON code. And then you have to have a UID to use Azure when you make the request. So that's what we've got going on there. Okay, so those are our headers. And then we've got the most important part, the body, which actually looks like barely any code at all. Uh, and we're just saying the text that we want translated is the stuff that got out of the form. That's all the stuff that we need to send away to make this request. So now we've got the endpoint and that whole URL we want to make the request to. We've got all the stuff we want to send off to make the request. I think it's time to make the request. So we make another post request. As I said, if you want to learn more about post requests, so watch my other streams with the URL we built, the headers, and the body is the JSON body that we're going to send off. Okay, so they get that request and we store its response. So then we can then break down that response translated out of JSON, because that's what we get back from the web into a nice Python dictionary that we can now go through. And we want to grab the first item out of it. We're going to look at translations. And the reason we're going to add another zero here is because you can actually do multiple translations at once. So if I said, you know, translate, hi, how are you going into Japanese, French, and Spanish, it would give me three different translations. But because we've just set it up to make the one translation, uh, it's just going to give us it back. 
it's going to give us a single item in this list. Let's grab the first and only item and then grab the text, which is going to be that translation that we've been waiting so long to put into our site that looked a bit dumb before because it didn't do anything useful. So I got that. Now we get rid of the line where we previously said, I'm not smart. We put in the translated text. I think we're ready to go, at least in our local version. Okay, let's check it out. This is running locally on my computer. There we go. Japanese. I did not speak Japanese at all. Okay, so I, now that it checks out. Excellent. Good to know. Like I have some like very rusty French. That's it. Excellent. Okay. So we've got that and like it's all, all looks all right, except for like it's not super pretty on this side. Like it doesn't match as good as stuff that we have going on the front end. So I did a little bit of CSS. I don't think it's as good as my you know, first page CSS, but I'm going to do a little bit of prettification, add some style. There's another picture coming. And just, I don't need to know what I wrote before. I know that. I don't need to know what language I put it in. I know that. I just want to see my letter that I want to send off to my pen pal, but now translated into something that they can understand and that I have no idea what it says. But hopefully you, everyone in the audience speaks multiple languages, probably more than me, I'm hoping, so they can tell me if these are actually correct and as it can be trusted. Um, so far, I'm trusting it with my life and it's not, you know, saying something horribly insulting to my foreign pen pals. So I'm actually going to show you what the prettification looks like at the end once we've got it up on the cloud. So we're going to move on to Azure App Services to, yeah, get it live on the cloud so we can all have it, not just me on my computer at home. So my pen pals could actually talk back to me or something. I'll be just sending letters out to the world and hoping to make a friend or something. So super easy to get something up on Azure App Services. We just need to put our code up on GitHub. We're going to push it up to GitHub. We're going to then make an Azure, hmm? Azure um, yeah, instance of Azure for our web app and then connect it to our GitHub and then we're done. It's super chill. Oh, there's also keys in there, but that's part of the Azure setup. So uh, we set up on Azure to, uh, we set up GitHub, GitHub repo and we push up our code. If you want the code, it's on that QR code or on that URL. You too can have it uh, and play with this at home if you would like. Uh, yeah, and then it's up there and we're ready to connect our Azure thing to it. Uh, I do note that you need to make a couple of changes. As I said, our cloud version is going to be slightly different to our local version. Firstly, we had these at the top of our local version to import .n and then to load .n, but we don't need those anymore because Azure's going to handle that all because it's going to store our secret keys and things, environment variables in a way that we can don't have to do this extra work to make it work. Uh, added a couple of things, uh, made a couple of changes, just the way that it's set up in the MS Learn pathway uh, doesn't quite work for the current version of how we get environment variables on Azure. So slight change is basically changing some square brackets and round brackets and it's Super basic. I also put in this debugging statement to actually see that my secret key is working because you won't see in the video because I obviously edited it out so you can see, but I figured it's good to know that if you make a typo when you're naming your secret keys, it doesn't work. So you've got to print them out to see that it's actually all connected and it's not just lag or something. And actually it was my fault all along. Uh, so let's have a look at setting up Azure App Service. So we go through and we say, create me an Azure app service. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to say Python 3.9. I'm in Australia East. And I'm going to go into this page. Don't skip this page. Like in the first one, we just skipped review and create. You want to do this page because we want to enable uh, Git Actions continuous deploy. So every time I push something to GitHub, it will deploy a new version of my code, whatever that is, which is really handy. Uh, so next up, we've got to authorize our GitHub account and be like, yep, this is me. I want you to be able to access me. I'm going to set my uh, organization to be myself. 
and to use the repo I set up and showed you earlier. Now we can skip to review and create, and then you wait not very long for it to deploy because of magic, camera editing. Okay, next part. This is the next key, next key part. Uh, we've got to go to configuration, which is down here, which is where we set up our keys. And we're just going to make the three keys that we had in the .end file earlier. So we say, okay, if we want our environments variables stored here, we've got our location, we've got our endpoint, and we've got our key, which I'm obviously not going to show you. <laughs> so we save that, and then we wait for it to deploy, which obviously only takes one second um, because of camera magic. And then you go, and you go, okay, cool, we've got it all. Working. So let's type a longer message and see it all in action. And that's it. We've we've made it. It's on the cloud. It's all happening. Uh, yeah. Sadly, it doesn't keep our new line characters, so it doesn't keep our formatting. But everything else, you know, you can, you'll have to do that yourself. Uh, so that's it. Uh, we've done. We made it. It's pretty pretty, I would say. Um, yeah, and you can try it yourself. Uh, this is the Azure, um, this is the, oh, you can, you can try this yourself on your phone if you want to check it out. If you do want to check it out, please turn on desktop mode because it does, it's not optimized for mobile. It just won't show you the background pictures. It will be sad. All the beautification work will be for nothing, but you can try it and translate to one of the options in there. I should have included Klingon or some of the fun languages. Or like a language that I barely understand at all, like French, but I didn't go and change their code to include different things. So, but you could, you could have your Klingon to, I don't know, Portuguese translator. So that's, that's, that's it for the demo. If you want to learn more about this yourself, you can try the MS Learn pathway. Microsoft Learn will teach you all how to do all of those, uh, everything we did in there, I'll give you the code so you can connect it all up teach you more about Flask, or you can watch my talk on it, which I'll give you a link to in a second. If you want to learn more about Azure App Service, then you can check this one out. This one also has the CLI stuff for setting up Azure App Service, so you don't have to click all the buttons. You can do it with code if that's what you want, but also if you want to do it just by clicking the buttons, that's okay with me. And you can watch my stream on how to set it up in one of my other streams. So here's other stuff you might be interested in from me. If you like Python, Join me in the code garden. We're talking about Python data structures this month. I've also got a getting started workshop for women, girls, and gender diverse coders on Monday, uh, an interactive workshop on Teams. And if you want to go back and watch stuff that to help you, you know, learn other stuff like Code to Cloud has Web App Essentials, which will teach you how to make a Flask app, deploy it on the web, each you know, one hour for each of these, and do Azure Blob stuff that's in there. If you like Wordle and Python and data science, I've got a string for you there. And more Python in little uh, in, in the code garden from previous episodes. And also the original version of this talk where we talk in length about Azure App Service, get post requests, fast, everything. You can check it out in Little Learns as well as another episode on serverless code. So yeah, that's all for me. If you like me or Python or things, you can watch more stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Round of applause. Absolutely. Wow. I think it's safe to say that Renee had her coffee this morning. I've not had any coffee. I've you had haven't like had any 20... coffee, Jesus. I don't actually drink coffee because okay. imagine if I drink coffee, oh, it would be yeah, a real imagine, issue for the world. We'd all, we'd all be going at about a million miles now. Thank you very much for that, Thank Renee. Thank you. Um, and we've got four minutes. Four minutes for four questions. Minutes for this questions. is the first time I'm under time. It's like a record for me. And we do have, we do have swag to give away as well oh, for, uh, for good questions. Excellent. So, yeah. Yes. And target language. Target language, yep. Yeah, but I kept looking for original language, which I couldn't find. Oh, it's, it actually detects that automatically by itself. So Azure will handle that for you. It'll be like, what does this look like? Looks like English. Oh, it just does that for you, which is cool. Well, some languages are very similar, like in Swedish and Danish. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm no uh, linguistic expert. I hope they consulted one when they built it, but that is built in to part of it. So I'm not, I'm not sure, but it would be 
interesting. I, to I know. believe you when you call the APIs, you can specify the source language explici right. explicitly if you yeah. if you want to with Cog services. Excellent. So it's just not part of the demo, but it's it's there because you're right. Yeah. It can be like that. Excellent. Good question. Just a question on that: um, the translation and the app service. Which part of the customers? Uh, business units or technology stack is making an impact? Uh, yeah. From your experience? From my experience, uh, in my five months where I just do talks about things, I have no idea actually what impacts customers. That's my job to teach you all to go out and impact customers. But basically, I would think about it in terms of like you could make your websites or whatever you're using uh, more accessible to a wider audience of people. So is like one key thing you could do with this. Yeah, the other part of... Um, it's making that we have experienced it in contact center space where um, mm. different contact center uh, will help in the translation service. Yeah. That's what we have seen major impact, but I'm interested to understand where, where else this translation service is making an impact. Yeah. Um, I think, like, so I've not seen a lot of applications other than what the students are doing in Imagine Cup because I live in student land and I live in outreach land. Uh, but just making people able to communicate with a broader audience currently, but, and like also, you know, text automatically translating stuff into a language you can understand just connects more people. Yeah, but I think just super widely applicable is what I would say. You would imagine that given the scale of Microsoft, we use translation services pretty, pretty widely, right? And some of the stuff you might use as a consumer might eventually end up calling some of these APIs. Yeah. You know, we have a very big partnership with OpenAI and access to GPT-3. So you've got a massive natural language processing model there that you can utilize for some of this stuff. Dan, yeah. you had your hand up. Thanks for the question. Good question. Yeah, I think also just useful to like cut back on work developers have to do. So we don't all have to learn how to be a naturally natural language processor or anything so we can do focus on making solutions to the problems that we understand. Uh, who's next? Yes. The uh, stripping out of the new lines and stuff, that's the translator service that does that? Yeah, it just it just takes them away. So if you're going to format a web page like Translator web page, you'll have to do it in chunks to... Yeah, I think so, is what, what did, I would do. Did you know that new line in French is different to new line in English? It's very different. That's, <laughs> a, that's a joke, by the way, they're exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense in other languages they read, though, right to left, top to bottom, instead of like, yeah. So I don't know. It's interesting in terms of how we represent language in computer. One last question. Yep. So you 